listening to The Jim Cooper Show. I hope Jacob go. knows what he's getting himself into. This is make or break for him. Live from New York. I mean, this is a big deal. This is going to get millions of views. <laughs> Here's your host, Tim Cooperman, the Jewish jawline, the soundboard god, the bar mitzvah blitzer. Here with my talented co-host Nigel Petty Fernandez, the Italian stallion, the Chosen Crocher, consensually. 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 I don't even know what that word means. The Chosen Crocher. Yeah, no, no. Come on, that's part of the lore of the podcast. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. It's uh, we're back in the studio. It's extremely hot. It's, bro, it's it's about in 82 here, degrees in the studio. It's baking in here. So we're over here. We're having a great time. We're loving it. We're getting. It feels like we're on the beach. We're getting some sun. So it it, it feels like we're on the beach, but in the worst way possible. Yeah. The, the just worst all the way bad possible. parts of being at the beach. Like no sand. No sand. No water. Just sweat. Sweaty shirts. Right. Sweaty backs. But we're podcasting. We're yeah. podcast tough. I don't sweat all that much. No? No, I'm not a big sweat guy. Exactly. Why do you think? Is that because you're like you're Italian know. or? I don't know. Italian sweat. I just love being casually racist towards Italians. No, I know. I do too. Um, no, <laughs> I don't know. Italian sweat, dude. I don't sweat that much. Yeah? Yeah, even at the gym. Like, even if I'm going hard, like, I'll sweat a little bit. I'll get some sweat on my forehead, but it's like cleared up within seconds. It just, I'm it just goes right back it. up into the pores? Yeah, I don't know. It's going. I don't know. It's good. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm weird. I, I, I drip when I run, and that's about it. But you're dripping. You're almost dripping right now. I'm dude. dripping, yeah. You're well, I guess hot. I drip in general. Next time, we'll bring a fan. I feel a bead of sweat going down my 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 uh, eyebrow right now. Yeah. It's no, pretty you're, disgusting. Yeah, you're, you're sweating, for it's sure. It's pretty disgusting. But you're we're sweating. here. Nonetheless, episode 10. Ugh. Episode 10 of the Jacob Cooperman Show, and you know what else? We got to catch up a bump on our guy. I was going to say EDP 445, yeah. eat that pussy 445. We got to see what's going on with him, dude. The ch- the child molester. We, we we did we did a little bit of research last night, did we not? We didn't we didn't find jack shit. We didn't find that much. We um, we heard that he did the race and he, and he and he escaped the charge. Yeah, he did actually evaded the. He charge. got out of there. Uh, really, I don't think he broke any real crimes. You broke I any real he, laws? Yeah, I don't think there's any law saying that you can't text a thirteen year old. You know what I'm saying? Well, sexual images. Like we know that he sent dick pics and shit pics to the guy. Who is pretending to be a thirteen-year-old? I guess it does get a little bit money there, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I mean, I, I guess if you went on his phone, you might find him doing it to actual thirteen-year-olds. But, but I don't think they did that. And he also he did admit to it on camera. There's the other aspect that we have to we have to take into account. Can he? Can what he said in a in a public video be used against him? It goes back to that classic argument where you know rappers will get pulled up on gun charges for what they say in songs and all that stuff. Yeah, is that liable in court? Um. That's a really good question. Yeah, you know, is that I'm admissible in court? I'm not a lawyer. We don't know. We don't know. know. Uh, I think someone just has to charge him. Someone has to just try. I don't think anyone is. Uh, it's a little bit of a shaky. You know, there's some there's some details there that I guess we don't ha- have the full story on. You know, I really you know, want to know the full we story. Don't, we don't know where the evidence is. Yeah, but he probably doesn't want us to know the full story. So. Well, no, because he's a, a, a. I guess can we say it? Can we? He's a child he's a, diddler. He's, he's a child diddler, man. He's, he's a diddles, child diddler. He diddles, he diddles children. And in general, child diddlers don't want you to know that they're child diddlers. Who would have known that a guy named EDP eat that pussy? 445, 445. Is, was, a, was a, a known, not a known, but an yeah. undercover child molester. Yeah, man. That's crazy. I mean, think about guys like going back to what we said about Bill Cosby. Yeah. You know, he doesn't want you to know. He's making a whole docuseries about how he was probably, I mean, I, I imagine that the docuseries is going to paint him in a, in a good picture as we talked about last podcast. Yeah. Well, I, I also do I, – I don't think we have all the details of the full story on that either. But, Could very um, well be. Yeah, you know, I, I'm well, – Well, actually, wait, before we before – because we, that, that's one of those times where I just was, was thinking about something. I kind of glazed over it. What do you mean by that? I mean like I don't know exactly – what he like what what all the uh charges were i don't know what the women came out and said specifics well the um, the broad stroke that i know is that he quaaluded and and raped them right he date raped them right now i mean we know that for sure yeah like he admitted to doing that yes he said i did that i, I date raped yes women. yes okay, so then yeah we have the full yeah story. we got the full story <laughs> i was gonna say because i i know you're not defending him by any no, means no, yeah, but no. to a listener that's gonna be tuning in at home no, yeah. they're like what, excuse? I, well, I don't know because <laughs> Slow down. I, I always just assume that yeah, like, yeah, he he date raped and everything. But then I was kind of thinking about it. I was just like, well, I don't know for sure. You know, like I wasn't there in the courtroom. I don't know what he said. I don't know what the what the victim said. Yeah. Um. And if they're making a documentary about it, 
like I'm sure they're gonna try to paint him in a good light, but it's like how do you even do that? You know, like I was thinking maybe there are some details, maybe there are some things we don't know, but Well, I mean, if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't quite care. Yeah. To know the full story. Right. I, I'm I'm happy to stop short it. He quaaluded and raped multiple women, thousands not thousands of women, but various women. Yeah, dozens. Right? Um, I'm I'm like, like if if you say that even one. Yeah. If you say that in a criminal case and then you say, Oh, well, there's extra charges being racked up, I'm gonna say I'm good at there. We could we we I'm good there. We could throw away the key, you know, lock him up, throw away the key. That's yeah. it. I'm good. I'm right. done. What what did our commenters say? Oh yeah, so Essentially, what happened was I clipped up the, the Cosby conversation. I thought it was a great conversation about uh, how much press is good press and which press is good press and if there's a spectrum to that. And we had a really good convo, about 20 minutes long. A lot of people, I, I was surprised, came out of the woodworks and defended Cosby, said that we should have been sued. One guy said that he, he, he yeah, he hoped that Cosby came to town so he could support. Why? I don't know. See, that's why I said in the beginning, that's why I said we don't know the full story because there's no, there's no way. I don't – There's no way that people are like actually are defending this. No, this, that, there admitted. are people. There's always going to be people that defend someone. Right, but why, why are they defending a rapist? Because people defended uh, – what's his name? Charles Manson? Is that his name? Yeah. That is Charles name. Manson, the, the serial killer. Who defended Charles Manson? All the women that wanted to fuck him. Okay, uh, so so these guys want to fuck those. No, guys. but they they're just fans. Some people drink the uh, the Powerade or the Kool Aid. Or, yeah, some people drink the Kool Aid. That's just how it goes, dude. There are people like that in society. There are people. We always have this conversation that you can you can see these people walking around. These people are allowed to exist in society that will overlook and find some way in their head to justify or get around the fact that this guy drugged and raped women. Well, I guess we shouldn't be insulting. The people who are interacting with our videos, but I mean, I, that was kind of when you showed I, me that, I was like, "That's kind of crazy." That's kind of crazy. Well, yeah. I, I can insult those people. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. I. I. I, I I'll I freely insult. Really go, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> go f fuck you. <laughs> Defending a fucking rapist. The fuck <laughs> do I look like? Oh don't don't listen to our fucking show. I don't want you here. Oh my god. I, not you want them there. No. I mean, it was cool to see that we got we riled f people's feathers. I, I thought think it that was means... interesting to say the least. Yeah, I, I think that that shows that we're doing something right. But yeah, dude, go fuck yourself if you defend yeah. Bill Cosby. It, 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 when I saw that, that was what kind of made me think, like, okay, like, like, like maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. If people are actually defending this guy, because what if if I was correct on my assumptions, then there's no way anyone will be able to defend this guy. But no, somehow, you were correct. That guy's a rapist. Right. So somehow people people just put it out of their heads that like it doesn't matter people will buy into anything nigel and these were men yes okay it's easy for them to fucking say. yeah it's easy for them to it's say. easy for you guys to sit there and say, oh, no, i hope he comes to town so he can support <laughs> let's go fuck yourself <laughs> that's it, like it was funny because i responded like one dude was like i hope you get sued and i was like i well that won't keep the lights on so yeah. i had the you know the quick-witted responses but yeah dude when you really boil it down why would we get sued though because Bo Cosby, we're Bosby, de de Big we're Bosby's on the fucking on the hunt. We're committing def defamation, or whatever. I guess so because apparently there's a little bit of a gray area there because he was, I guess, the conviction was overturned. Yeah. So you can't prove in a court of law now that he is a rapist. So Why by saying that he is a rapist, even though we we basically know that he is a rapist, we could be sued for for libel. Okay, but why? Was, do, do we know why it was overturned? Because of a technicality. Do we know what that technicality was? Yeah, the technicality was I explained it on the last podcast. So essentially the I think it was the district attorney said that if if Cosby went up and it was something where if he went up, he it was it was pleading the fifth, right? Anything that you say can't be used against yeah, you. Right. They essentially told him that that was in fact the case and that, that was put into effect. He went up there and I think it had something to do with the confessions. He confessed to drugging and raping those women. And in so the district attorney fumbled it or something, something along those lines, and it was actually used against him. So they had to go back all these years later and mm. overturn the ruling because it was unconstitutional. So really the justice system, that, and, and that's the, the, the version of, a of events that was explained to me. Okay. That's what occurred. So the same laws that were put there to protect people are now where we're used. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing that a lot of people have um, gripes with, I guess, right. with the with the justice system. But pleading it, the fifth is important. It's no, it's it's extremely important. Yeah, 
It's extremely important, right. but that's the gripe that a lot of people have with the justice system is that it doesn't, it can, it's so technical that it, it, obviously it was made to be technical because you want to give everyone a fair trial and, and so, you know, so forth, but it can also go the other way where yeah. a technical, I mean, technicalities happen. Yeah. Cause mistakes what- happen, but it's just so, it's so pinpoint. I mean, that's everything in law. Yeah. Just very by the books. You know, you have to do something this way and exactly this way or else right. it, things can be overturned. That this, this stuff happens. Right. It just happened to Bill Cosby that happened to have raped and drugged many women, which is terrible. Yeah. And well, this that, man is now walking around. That doesn't make him not a rapist. It doesn't. It just it means makes that him by a, law, you not convicted rapist. Not convicted. But we, by, by proxy, we can now not call him a rapist. Why not? Unless we want to get sued. I mean, this is our opinion. But he raped girls. He did. But if he would want to sue us in a court system, it would be defamation because I guess now, well, it would it would be a court case because they'd have to figure out if there was enough evidence for us to be liable to call him a rapist. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it's not on a public record. And I guess we would have to, so let's express it real quick for, for legal purposes. We believe wholeheartedly that Bill Cosby is a rapist. Yes. Yeah. This is our opinion. I never, I never said that he was a convicted rapist. We actually, no, I did last podcast. I okay. Did. Well, you, you could get sued. I could get sued. I don't think he's a convicted rapist. But we do know that he I th- is. I, I th- as we far don't as know, we don't know, but we, we know. It's just it's no. So, Bill Cosby is a rapist. The legal, the legal mumbo jumbo. No, but that's the thing. That's the the messed up thing is in a court of law. If you were to take us to court and sue us, we could actually potentially lose. Now. I don't calling him a rapist. We would have to. But he's a it. yeah. He is a rapist. Right. I I don't know if we'd lose. I don't know if we'd lose though. There, I mean, it's it's a. I don't fifth, I don't think they would defend a rapist. Here's the thing, though. Okay. The the way the court system works just goes back to what we were talking about just now. It's very by the books. I understand. So those technicalities could go against us. So we would have to state that it is our opinion. Wink, wink. We know he did that shit. That he is a rapist. It is our opinions. It is the opinions of the women that he, the, the several women and the many women that he, that he accosted that he is a rapist. Yes, we'll hire one of them to be our lawyer. That's wild. <laughs> that's, a, that's a crazy take. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But like, you know what I mean? It's we, just we like. We get no shit off. We get they, no shit off. They, We're here, they baby. Would, they would, I mean, like, obviously Bill Cosby have a crazy good lawyer. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. I don't think there's any. This, where I'm coming from is that. Yeah. You know Eminem. Right. Uh, in his song "Brain Damage," yeah, that came out in what 1999, 2000. He the the song is about he's telling the story of this kid who bullied him, knocked him out in the bathroom, and he embellished the story a little bit, of course, for the mm-hmm. sake of the song. Right now, he n- names the kid by name in the song, D'Angelo Bailey. He yeah, says his name in the song, and because of that, that guy could never get a job again after Eminem mentioned his name in that song. So I'm now, sure the, the, guy, check. the guy took Eminem to court and lost, mm-hmm. even though Eminem did defamation t- by technically speaking, by mentioning this, kid, this guy's name in a song because the guy did like beat him up in a fucking bathroom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But still, even though he tried to sue Eminem for defamation and he lost, he lost the case because the jury was just like, but you knocked him out in a bathroom. And Eminem mentioned your name and talked about how you how you knocked him out in the bathroom. But the, that's not really defamation. That's de- well, it is defamation technically in the fact that outside of the lyrics that Eminem spit, the bars, the how do, how can we prove it? That's that's the. But the case wasn't thing. about whether he did it or not. The case was about was it right for Eminem to do what he oh, did? And they, say, they were they were just like, yeah, it okay, doesn't well, matter. Then, you know what? Well, I'm not I'm not I'm not. Uh, so let's write a song about it. You want to write a song about how? I can't, say, I can't say it. I can't say it. I was going to say something. It's just, you know what? Now I have to check myself. I realize that I say foul shit just on accident. Yeah, you guys should have seen the last podcast. We had to edit before hella he, stuff out. Before he edited it. I mean... It was. It was. We would. We should have got sued. We. The guy's right. We should have got sued. Not even by Bill Cosby. Just by like the FCC or something. <laughs> it was pretty foul. It was really bad. By the judicial system, man. I by the jujitsu system. That's funny. Dude, I'm freaking hot yeah it's 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 I'm it's steamy sweat, in here. i'm sweating my balls it's off. steamy but yes uh i well you know what listen I'm, i don't i don't claim to be a lawyer so i'd have to see how the legal proceedings would go with that but yeah i i think 
I think that'd be so sick. As sad as it is, it would be great publicity for us. We'd blow it up. We'd blow it up. We couldn't talk about the court proceedings on the podcast, but we could talk about the fact that we were nah, in just, a legal would, battle with Bill Cosby. Attack Cosby and his lawyer on there. Really, just just lay into him. Just lay into him, and just lose just the be case. Like, okay, so first of all, you're defending a rapist, and then they're gonna bring that up in court and be like, okay, so well, that's something else I've always wondered. Is like you as a defendant, you have to, or as a as a defense lawyer, you have to sometimes defend people. That's always been crazy to me. That you don't necessarily agree with, but that's just part of the job. That's what you sign up for. Yeah, I mean, I I don't agree with you the whole way. It's it's like the the bottom lawyers, the ones that the court gives you for free. Mm. If like you can't afford a lawyer, those guys have to defend anybody, right? But if you're oh, if you open up your own private you practice, your, or even if you're at like a thing, you can kind of choose what you take. Okay. Right? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess I guess maybe not if you're not like. Well, even in, the, in even in the scope of celebrities, there are some really good lawyers that, as you say, could probably take their pick. Celebrities come to them, like the OJ. OJ. Yeah, you have to sometimes defend an OJ. But the thing is, they kind of knew OJ was going to win that, though, because his defense lawyer was one of the best. Well, also there wasn't enough evidence. Yeah, well, they he didn't also, really have anything. There, on there him. was, but a, a good lawyer will know how to. A good lawyer on the other side could know how to make something out of nothing, and a good defense lawyer can can not manipulate, but can really shine lights on the fact that that the system. Th- th- that's the thing. A really good lawyer, I think this entire segment sums it up. A really good lawyer knows the system and knows the technicalities and and knows the the pitfalls and the traps. Yeah, and can can negotiate and manipulate those those traps. Right. That's what makes a really good lawyer. Absolutely. So, even though we don't think that oh, – I think that Bill Cosby uh, could potentially have a, a case because we uh, – A, we're a small podcast. B, we do we, – we get wild here. We do get we, we do, do get, get rowdy. Really wild. We get rowdy for so sure. So if we wanted to pull up the episode, I'm pretty sure the clip started off with you being like, well, yeah, he's a rapist. So that right there yeah. would be off the bat. The defendant would be like – you do like the mic I, drop. I rest my case. I rest my case. But the guy admitted to raping people, so I don't understand – but it got overturned. That's the thing. It's it just. But in, does it? But if in a you perfect admit- in a perfect world, Nigel, that would be enough to end the case. But because it was unconstitutional, the way they handled it, that gets erased. I, I understand that, but that doesn't mean that he still didn't say himself that he's a rapist. He admitted to being a rapist. We're not calling him a rapist. We're repeating his words. Okay. Well, yeah. You know I what mean, I'm saying. OJ, that's what our that's OJ, what our lawyers would do. Right, you can't call OJ Simpson a murderer because he never admitted to murdering Nicole, whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Even well, though yeah. he, he wrote a book called "If I Did Do It, This Is How I Would Have Done It." That was pretty crazy. That was nuts. He's like hypothetically. That, that was, hypothetically in a perfect world. In a perfect world. That's if I crazy. Took a knife and I stabbed how, her. How do you do the race and then come out with a book explaining how you did the race? That's actually kind of that's, that's nuts. That's bro. a different level. That's yeah, That's and the, the whole book is glass. it's written like that. Like it's literally like I, did, I, I didn't it. do it, but if I were to murder this person, what if I were, I would have gotten to the house around eight fifteen. Dude, he, I, I saw an interview that he did. He did. Yeah. He was talking about he's like, hypothetically on the night of. It was a windy night, but hypothetically, if I was there, yeah, and he was naming all of the things that occurred on the Breaking night of, it down. but just saying hypothetically in front of it. Yeah, well, it's, dude, it's so he hilarious. won, dude. He won. Yeah, that was the that was that was one of the biggest cases in cases in U.S. history. I just love how he won, and he was like. Ah? Oh. oh, oh. Well, the thing is, you know, it's just it's hilarious to me. The OJ case was it's tough because it was just like everyone knew that he did it, but like there wasn't it just it's wasn't just, enough. Man. <laughs> it just wasn't fucking enough, bro. That's a juice. He ran for over fourteen hundred yards. <laughs> bro, that's that's enough of a right there. Yeah, for real, dude. And not only that, I've I've also heard some theories that he actually didn't do commit the murder. That was, like, that would it be was, a it twist. Was, it, was and his a bro- it was his brother, and he was covering up for his brother. Like the whole car chase, mm-hmm. he was doing that to get the media's attention while his brother was like cleaning up or something. Like he was, he 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 walked in on his brother committing the murder. Interesting, and, man. And uh, he was like, he just told his brother he'd help him get off because th- they didn't have any anything on OJ. They would have had something on his brother because I like I like when we get a little bit conspiracy conspiracy I'm theory podcast segment on these guys. Theory, I know you. I've are. actually been getting into like a little bit of rich- witchcraft lately. That's how deep I am in the conspiracy theories, man. I swear to God, I might be going a little bit too far. I'm gonna no. keep it real tall with you. 
<laughs> that might be a little, that might be I going disagree, a little bit too far, dude. I disagree, bro. I've been the the Naharo, Najaro, whatever it is, the the witchcraft Najaro. I've been getting into that. That sounds like a drink you find it, at a gas station. Fi- I think it's fire. I think you just named a brand of peanut butter that you can get in a convenience <laughs> I think, store. I think it's so fire, Najaro. Dude. Bro, because, like, just some stuff you can't explain, like, government conspiracies and also, like, night walkers and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I, I know the night walkers. Those night things walkers. are creepy. Bro, I think they're real. You think so? Bro, because I saw this video, this woman acted like she left her house, and she's recording the door, and you see her dog open up the door, stick his head out, see she's there, and then slam the door again. And she starts screaming. The I'll dog the did it? Yeah, the dog, the, she's recording the door. She actually, like, she walked out her front door and then, like, didn't like, close it and then sat down and started recording her bedroom door. She locked her dog in the bedroom door. And she sees the, after the dog thinks she's gone. The dog, you see the door open up. The dog sticks his head out, sees her, and then slams the door shut. And she starts screaming. Well, if my dog does that, then I'm... And I know dogs, you know, dogs are smart animals. I'm yeah. sure that there are dogs uh, My out dog there. opens up some but, doors. But, but to be standing on two legs, open the door, peep, and then close it. What like, are you doing if your dog does that? I'm body slamming my dog through a table. Oh, dude, I'm burning the house down. No, I'm, I'm going to call someone I'll who fuck deals that with, I'm going to call someone who deals with witchcraft, Naharo, Najaro, whatever the fuck. I'm calling someone up who deals with witchcraft. She was like, you know uh exorcist whatever what are the what was the the, the movie i just saw the conjuring whatever. conjuring you're calling ed and lorraine warren yeah i'm gonna call one of those guys the last conjuring movie what was it the devil made me do it that was about witchcraft yeah so no, they, they put down an enchantment in the, in the basement did you see that movie no it was, I, I liked it i thought it, i thought it was more interesting than scary dude that that movie franchise is really getting into the point where i don't want it to become fast and furious yeah but you know what i mean yeah how many movies are we gonna see out of this? What? Because there's another but one. They're in not. They're not getting like crazier and crazier though. They're that. They're all based on no, true well, stories. You know, Fast and Furious the stories. Five wasn't that crazy. Now we're at Fast Nine, and John Cena is in space. Vin Diesel's brother, and they're all in space fighting. Right, I understand that, but I don't think it's gonna get like they're all based off well, true I, stories. Yeah, I guess it's different because they're based off of cases that the, yeah. the Warrens had. I mean, it's good, good movies. I think they're sick. I believe in all that ghosts. Yeah, no, all that shit. Same witchcraft. Same. For sure, but I yeah, a, no, I have my, a dream catcher in my room. If if my if my dog does that, I'm 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 taking him out. Well, if the thing is, if your dog does that, then it just proves that it's real. You know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, the, my nah. biggest fear is 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 thinking that your dog has entered the room, and then there's just because I have uh, sleep paralysis sometimes. Oh, and don't I get see me on that. I see homeboys just like lined up on the corner in the <sighs> corner of the posted room, posted up, posted up, t posing on me, dude, Millie rocking, Millie rock, shmoney dancing on the other dancing, dude. <laughs> Here we go, bro. Another inside joke for the listeners that we were crafting up. But no, I, you know, that's my biggest fear is waking yeah. up and just seeing a, a figure in the corner of the room. Yeah. Biggest fear. I used to have such bad sleep paralysis. I used to get it like almost every single night at one point in my life. Yeah. And it, then it, it kind of went away and then it came back and now I don't have it. It comes in with stress, yeah. I found, for me. Yeah. I had a bad like senior high school. I had it like pretty much every single night. Jesus. And then even when I was at my most stress, only I was having them maybe every two or three nights. Yeah. Maybe not every single night. Maybe it was sometimes it would happen every single night, sometimes it would skip a day. Uh tenth grade. It it only happens during like the school year, really. And sometimes it happens over the summer for me. But I haven't had one in probably like a year. Well, you know what you know what the sleep paralysis demons have taught me? What? Is that I'm ready for go time. Yeah. I get up ready to fuck some people up. Bro, I had sleep paralysis so much that eventually I didn't even see demons anymore or anything like that. I didn't see anything creepy. No, you know what I'm saying, though. I didn't see anything creepy. I just Demons like, were like, you know what? I was just – I was so used to it at that point that I was just like my mind wouldn't even bother trying to scare me. It was just like I wasn't scared by the sleep paralysis anymore. Damn. I would so just, you, I would just, just wake up and I'd be hardened. like – I would just be like I know it's going to go away in 25 seconds because I've – like it happened yesterday and the day before, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how your, bad it got. For your me. mind created them and then took them out of the equation. Yeah, well, because crazy. at a certain point, I was just like, I was. It was just a normal routine almost. And like, I know that probably sounds bad, but it's just like. That's I mean, it's not bad. Works. It's something that was out of your control. Yeah, it the sucked. Computer's though. also just feeling the, the heat right now. Yeah, the computer's going crazy. Computer's man. going crazy. Is man. it plugged in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm. Drink break. We're going. Yeah, we're going hard on the water today. Jesus Christ. Well, yeah. no, I mean, dude, I'm. I'm spitzing. Anyways, I'm spitzing. back back to witchcraft. I know we I know we had like a schedule and stuff. Yeah. For this episode, but it's it's just going in this direction. It is going in this direction. I was actually gonna pull up what we really had to talk about. What, oh. what was the next thing? <laughs> so fuck Bill Cosby. Um. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I forgot. That's how we started. <laughs> fuck Bill Cosby. How did the fuck did he get to witchcraft? 
Oh, dog, I don't even know. Uh, we'll watch the episode. We'll watch the episode yeah. back. Oh, shoot. Someone just, okay. What we do? We able to create an account. Oh, I'm back in that Dizelle Fantasy Football League. All right. Conversation for another podcast. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about me being a national hero goalkeeper. Yes, I do want to talk about that. And you're going you're gonna to show me the video too, right? Well, I have the video. We can pull it up in a second. But do I want to give the listeners context? Yes. So I made the rounds on ESPN Radio this entire week. Yeah. I, uh, I went up against the famed Dave Rothenberg. And play play that you can in editing play the clip. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll play I'll play. Well, the should we play bite. the soundbite now and just listen to? It? I know you already listened to it, but just for I mean, just just throw it in and post. I mean, I mean, throw it in throw yeah. it in and post. Um, so this is what the guy had to say about Coop. Yeah, I'm gonna say five. I'm You're say exactly seven. right. Good Ooh, job, five by cameras. you. Five cameras at the shoot. Are you gonna have a GoPro on your head or anything? Uh, I don't know what they have planned. To be honest with you. There's got to be one behind you, so that I want to. I want to see. What I'm going to be seeing. fully mic'd up, so you can hear everything going on. Uh, I believe Jacob, who's the goaltender, will be fully mic'd up, so you'll hear everything from him as well. And then we're going to be out there. We're going to be taking shots. Does, does Jacob realize what he has at stake right now today? He's he's big. I'm I'm. I don't want to say I'm concerned, but like clearly, if if you walked by Jacob and someone said to you that was a soccer goalie in in high school at a high level, you'd say that's about right. Like he's probably six three, he's he's a big, muscular guy. Like there there are concerns that I go out there and this doesn't go well. Yes, is he is he? I mean, are we talking Jean Luigi big? Um, like that kind of big a six four. I mean, Jean Luigi six five. So yeah, six four. I mean, that's a big he's, dude. He's he's big. What does I mean, he do? You is definitely he walk intern? by him and you're like, this guy this guy's an athlete. Yes. Is he an intern on the show? Yes. How old is he? Twenty two. Okay, so today is is July what fourteenth? Correct. Twenty twenty one. You got. I, I hope down, Jacob yes. knows what he's getting himself into because this is going to be. I mean, this is your last. Your spider tech had what a, a million and a half views. One one point. Uh, last check, it had one point eight million. More. Views. Use it. That's right. So your very creepy sexual spider tech had one almost two million views. Really he, he cannot, work with that spider tech. <laughs> this really jeopardizes everything he's ever worked. Worked for as an athlete today. Yeah, it's all. He can't, can't play sports again. It's all. He the legitimately line. cannot play sports. If now, you what score if five goals, and I'm just sensational. Like he's no. he's guessing right. He's 22 years old. Dave. So what? What You're happens if I, I, I pinpoint like accuracy right into the corners, like like we've never seen before? All right. So yeah, the guy was. Uh... All right. We just had to reset the cameras, people. So what basically what's been happening is uh, before I get into the Rothenberg segment. Our, our cameras in the studio, they record for 30 minutes each individually. So we have to reset them every around probably 29, 26 minutes. But yes, essentially what you're probably hearing now and what you're, you know, you heard before we had to reset the cameras is, uh, is Rothenberg absolutely singing my praises. Yeah. I will say, though, he is one of the best analysts, uh, not even analysts, but just personalities at the ESPN. Oh, I mean, it was very entertaining. He's a, he's a fun guy even to listen to. Even though I know you, and some of the stuff he was saying was a little incorrect. I well, was I'm 6'1", like, I'm, like, oh, I'm not 6'3". Coop sounds scary, man. I was like, I wouldn't want to go up against him. He absolutely lumbers over to the goal. He's just yeah, taking up the wide, entire frame. Wide shoulders. <laughs> wide, I do have wide shoulders. You do have wide shoulders. I do shoulders. have very wide shoulders. And I, I, don't, I even go so, uh, so far as to say that I look athletic. You do look athletic. So, you know, he wasn't quite lying, but he definitely embellished no, he me a little bit. He wasn't lying. He, he was kind of, he was kind of, he was kind of promo. But how tall are you? I'm six foot, six foot one. No, maybe. We're, we're good. Let's fact check him. How you're, you're six foot? He said six, six foot, foot three. So I'm six foot, six maybe foot six foot two, one. Yeah. Uh, he said you were 22. So I was 20. I'm actually 20. Right. But I, again, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's the beard. It is a little bit. It does of a lot for beard. me. Yeah. And he said that I had played uh, or that I would gotten some D1 offers. Not true. I said it to him on the day of. I got in his mind. I, the thing is, I had him on on strings. Yeah. I had him in the palm of my hand. Really? It was terrific. Very good. I had him in my beck and call, man. And so what did you guys do? What was the activity? So he was essentially saying, and we'll talk about the Euros, the Euro finals in a little bit, uh, the poor England kid soccer. Dave, sitting in, I believe it was that chair, said that he could score on the Italian national goalkeeper, who was six foot five. And is in the national league, you know. He's a national goalkeeper. He said, Dave said he thought that he could score at least two goals on him. And I, I walked in, and of course I'm on the set because I do I do social media, so I'm I'm off over here. And I said, Dave, there's absolutely no way you'd able to you'd be able to score any on him. Yeah. I said I think during the recording I was like no shot. 
Yeah. He's like, well, what if I, you know, hit him with a head fake and I go left and I go, I go, maybe your chances would go from zero to 0.0001. Because the kid, again, is six, not even so a kid. He's a grown man. you're just man. roasting this ESPN now. Well, I, it's a little bit flagrant. Don't you think that he thought that he could score on the Italian national goalkeeper? Yeah, but you also said that you'd be able to get a bucket on... Who'd you say? Because I was fucking around. I don't actually think I'd get a bucket on Harden. <laughs> oh, yeah, what am I, dog. stupid? <laughs> Maybe he was trying to cut a promo, too. Who knows? But I came in doing my best Vince McMahon impression. And uh, yeah, I cut, I cut a promo myself. He said, hey, well, you know, how do you know? I said, well, you know, I, I played in high school. Yeah. I played in high school. This is before I told him I had a D1 offer. Not true. To Harvard. Harvard doesn't even have a soccer team. It's hilarious. I said, I played in high school. I, I, I'd like to say I was pretty good. Right. He says, oh, really? I said, yeah. He goes, how many do you think I'd get on you? I said, zero. Because, you know, at this point, listen, I'm into it. I'm on camera. Yeah. Right? I want to sell. The, the, the name of the game is cut a promo. Right. Dave knows that. I know that. Right. We're in this together now. I say zero. He goes, zero. Okay, I think go. Yeah, zero. Okay? Yeah. He goes, all right, well, let's, let's go out to the field. We'll take 10 penalty shots. I want your cleats out there. I want your gloves. Your best. You know, I don't want any excuses. Your best foot forward. I said, all right. Uh, about a week goes by, I get to the field, you know, I'm doing my warmups. I'm feeling good. I had a few flying saves. Very nice. You know, I'm in my full attire. I even busted out my backup cleats that I had never touched. Wow. I didn't want any excuses. Right. Right. I brand new pair of cleats. Very nice. Hadn't been touched. Okay. My gloves. I get a nice shirt. I have my elevate shirt. I'm sure people have seen it. You've seen me wear it on the podcast. Excuse me. Before I bust that out, I got the athletic shorts on. I'm ready to go. So after a while, I'm good warming up. I'm just waiting for him to get there. Everyone's setting up the cameras. Everyone did a great job on the shoot. Shout out to Media Squared again. I injured for them. They're letting us use this office. Same guys. Dave gets there, and he's wearing a sweatshirt and shorts in 80-degree weather. So at this point, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit afraid. Because what, kind of what kind of a madman wears <laughs> a sweatshirt in 80-degree weather? Just chaos. Just chaos. His, his, uh, his, his quads? No, not quads. His calves? Yeah. His calves are pretty massive. Okay. So I'm, I'm profiling him a little bit. Right. I'd seen him because we have, uh, for, the, for the podcast, we have the, uh, the internship, or excuse me, the, uh, the ad, um, what is it? They're, they're sponsoring the podcast. It's Untuck It. Okay. Usually he wears the Untuck It shirts live on air. Right, right. So I, I've never seen his, his physique outside of a, of a buttoned up shirt that's untucked right but you know what you could tell that at some point he played professional like not professional sports but he played sports he's played sports. he's athletic yeah, yeah yeah he, he's got you know a lot of people were roasting him in the comments on the video saying that he had an un- unathletic run-up run-up wasn't that bad okay okay and he's got a hell of a boot on him i will say that so he shows up does a couple of warm-ups you know he's talking trash we cut the promo again we intro you know because we have to we have to Start the segment off. We have to intro it. So he's talking. He brings me in. I'm saying, you know, I still think zero. Da, 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 da. And at this point, you know, listen, I thought I'd be more afraid. You weren't scared at all. I was going to ask you that. What were you thinking no, no. when he was taking those? I was, I, you know, because of course you're thinking in the back of your head, right? Because Dave has made the rounds. He's hyped me up. Right. I have to be held to a high standard. If I miss and I get destroyed, say if I go the wrong way or I guess the wrong way, that's the end of my career, Absolutely. and I'm going to get torn apart online. Yeah. And I was thinking about that on the way over, and when I got there, I just felt this serenity, this calm wash over me. Beautiful. I said, it's the internet, baby. It's the These internet. people are never going to meet me. I'm never going to meet them. Right. So why don't I go out there? Why don't I have fun with it? Right. I said, the pressure's on Dave. He's the one with, he's the one with a radio gig. Yeah. You know? He's the one that has to report on work with DiPietro and, uh, and, and Canty right. every morning. He has to talk about it. Yes. I have a podcast. I could talk about it, but I'm unknown. Right. So once I made that distinction, my mind completely switched off. Doesn't matter. And I was just reactive. Are you going to show me? Flow state. I yeah. I want to see uh, this thing, man. Okay. I was flow state at that point. Didn't matter what Dave said. Didn't matter what I said. What mattered was those penalty shots. And then I, I went out and I did this. One second. You could just throw the video up over. I mean, that's what it's always what we do. Yeah. But I want you to take a look at it. I do want to see it. Okay. All right. So where do we where do we want to start this from? From then I want to see the whole thing. You want to see the whole thing? Yeah. All right. And welcome aboard. It's Rothenberg on Talk, but we've taken the show out on the road a little bit this week. If you remember in last week's episode, I was very confident in my 
Soccer just try to keep it down just for post. So I want to put it in well, post. The penalty kicks were an absolute disaster. And I made a flippant remark of I have confidence in my penalty kicks. And everyone on the set was just taken aback. How do you think that an average middle-aged Westchester living man could go out there and dominate on penalty kicks? So what we've done You'll see in the video, too. It's, it's quite obvious that I was warming up beforehand. Goalie. Let's bring him in. Jake, you're my competition, yes, so I don't want to speak too highly of you, but you can, I mean, this is an athletic man. You can see. Uh, yeah, I look, I, I look like I've been putting in that work. Control, but that's uh, Doing some so, somewhat yeah. unstoppable, a little bit schwitzy, a little yeah. bit sweaty. Uh, some, some dirt schwitzy. all over you. You have the goalie gloves. Looks good. The cleats. You look yep. confident. I heard you had a tremendous warm-up heading into this uh, this competition. I'd say so. I was, I, the balls were coming in in slow motion. Yeah, yo, yo, pause that, pause that, pause that. As soon as I said that, I was like, bro, pause. I was like, damn, the son, the balls were coming in at slow motion. Damn, I set myself up. And, uh, you know, I was getting to him. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 10 shots on Jake. There was a Twitter poll thrown out there. Shout out, they do a great job. Show on 98.7 ESPN in New York, and you dominated in the Twitter poll. Over 500 people voted of whether I'll get four and a half or over goals or four and a half or under goals. So right. I think the betting public is completely out of their minds, but we're going to, uh, we're going to find out in just a moment. Now here's what I don't want. I don't want you to weep. I don't want tears. Pause that. Do destroy. At that point, I was like, game on. Yeah. You're, you're confident ready to go. I, I'm, yeah, let's do it. Which is a distinct Cause this, yo, pause that one more time. This was for all the marbles. I felt yeah. like not only was I representing myself, I was representing you, my yeah. co-host, right. the brand, the JCS. Right. Uh, but I, I, sh I shouldered that, and I put the team on my fucking back. Yeah. Like a man, no do you excuses. understand? No excuses. I'm confident. I'm ready. All no right. Excuses. We're going to take this to the field right now. My right leg, as you can tell, it's, it's, it's muscular. It's, it's firm. It's uh, be very Beckham-like. I don't want to go too long with the segment either. So if you want to, like, right fast now, forward it. Rothenberg on top. Can you just, like... Put the highlights in the background. All right, we're taking it out onto the field. Here we go. What do you mean? Oh, just like us talking? Right yeah. Leg warmed yeah. Up, ready to go. Jake, you nervous? You're anxious? How you feeling? Go, Let's do well, no, I mean, right, it's a podcast. Go. People want to hear. Over under, four and a half, ten ticks. Starts now. First one, easy save. Let's go. That was a terrible shot. That's over for one. Horrendous shot. That was a gimme. We're fine. We're confident. Just got to hit 50%. You ready for two? See, see, for pause one. that. When, when I saved that first one, you don't, you have no idea how much confidence that gave me. Yeah. I was like, bro, if that's the best that he's got, that's that's a routine save for me. Shot two. Here we go. Oh, that's a good yeah. save. See, yeah, my confidence at that point was like, all right, well now I'm I'm feeling good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I do think I could have played right D1. Now, very Brazilian. I think this is a Neymar type of approach that we have. Third shot is a terrible shot. See, at the that balances. point, third shot in, I, should I was feeling fantastic. Out. I'm kicking him right into him, him, and it's not the intent. He started mixing it's, it up. It's become mental warfare now between me and Jake. Still fine. 0 for 3. Here we go. Fourth shot. Oh, my oh. God. That's a good save. Bro, I'm he telling you, he should not have shot. let me get that early one. Um, we call that upper 90 in the soccer world. That, that, that was upper. Yeah. I felt good about that. that was, uh, for Ooh, sure. A lot of them were. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yep. 0 for 4. Shot 5. Right now. That's a goal. Yeah, he gets that one. Am I all right? Fair enough. That was a good one. The ones, uh, pause that one more time. The ones that he did place, he placed extremely well. The ones that he got were ones that I could not have gotten to if I tried. So I, I'll give compliments to Dave where compliments are due. He put, a, he put it he top in in the corners. And what was the over right, though, Four and a half. Giorgio yeah. Canale, yeah, right? heard of him, taught me that move. One of five, I believe we are. Still in trouble. Many people thought I'd get zero. I've already outdone that. We're one for five. Shot six. You ready? I believe he gets one another five. one here. Here we go. I feel like this is embarrassing. I'm somewhat winded from shooting penalty shots. I'm, I'm, I'm out of wind, too. It was blazing right, out there. You're 20, though. He says he's here we go. All right, I'm ready. I think he gets this one, too. On the way. Oh my God! Look at him. He's like a, a tumblist. I mean, he's all over the place. He's I was like, playing that Drew like Holiday lockdown defense. Look good. All right. Oh, there's a camera above. That's one for six. Yeah, dude. We had VAR technology. Yes. How many have you made so far? Nico, I need your help. Oh, How many have you made so far? Yeah. You know the game of soccer. I know Shout out, Nico. I understand. Last time we were discussing your soccer knowledge, I'm one of six at this moment. 
not good enough. It's not good enough. You have to get five. I got to go five for five. Did you watch the home run derby? He makes Alonzo, it go. Let, let, let me get the yeah, let me get the phone. I saw Alonzo, it. Alonzo, you want to see it? Do you want to see the full thing? I want to see the video, man. You want to see the full thing? Yes. Can we not? This segment's it. going crazy right now. All right, right. You were the one that's like, oh, I want to show you live on air. Yeah, but you know what, though? I don't want this segment being like 25 minutes long. Oh, my God. Pete Alonzo. So it it was such that a good, was a good shot. Save. It was so well placed. One of seven. One of seven. Count this one. Two of eight. Oh, my God. I, I, I abused him. I, I mean, yeah, I he abused missed that him. one. It was a brilliant shot. He had me. And it just hit the He post. definitely had me. All right, we're one of eight. But he just go. missed it. All right. Two and nine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The best one. Now, had I been doing that oh, more often, the, I, I would be dominating him because I'm the better player. Oh, wait, the math doesn't make sense. And, and just uh, the occasional miss. What is that, two for nine? I think, well, the, the best it's save comes up now. Miss. And then you we don't have to watch the rest fake. of it. See, now I'm really, really taking my game to the next level. Two for nine. It's Last the shot. best you save of my career. I truly believe if I got another 10, I would probably go seven for 10. Or pass out one of those. Here we go. You ready? Last shot. Oh my God. That was a good yeah, bro. Around. Come on, man. That you know what he's like? Yeah, watch it in slow these motion. Ranges, these these trapeze artists that go over like Vegas, and occasionally one falls off and passes, but usually they make it. You look good. So thank you. All right. You look good, dude. So thoughts. I uh I thought I put on a defensive clinic that day. You did. You look good. You look professional. That's what you I'm look saying. Like man. you played for the D1 team at Harvard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, you look super good. Those are like really respect. Respect. I mean, listen, man. I had to put on a show, right? That's Dave Rothenberg. I have to make us look good. We might get. I'm, I'm thinking about getting Dave on the show, honestly. That'd be so. Awesome. Getting his side of the story. Yeah. You know, because he as as I uh, as I heard it on the radio, he said, and we could play the clip too in the background. Maybe I don't know. We'll see what Coop and Post is thinking, but uh. I know he said on the show after the fact, the day after, that, uh, that you know, he, he kind of – I had him at – I played D1 soccer at Harvard. Right. That's when I was firmly in his head. Right. And his co-host, you know, they mirrored, they mirrored my sentiments. They're like, I think, I think he got you. And, and to get in the head of, of a legendary ESPN analyst, a legendary ESPN personality like Dave Rothenberg, yeah. I take that as two monumental dubs that day. Now, I will say, we did do an extra five. Dave got three of five. But in totality, five out of 15, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, no, I mean, that's still, you got the, you got the, you got the under on him, so. That's yeah, good. but it, it was kind of also, at first, I could see how the pressure would be on Dave, but the pressure was also, I mean, I, I played, uh, I believe Dave is in his 50s or his yeah. 40s. So, you know, again, if I, if I underperform, I look terrible. Yeah. I look back. Well, you were supposed to win, and you did win. Yeah. But the thing is, he didn't underperform either, though. I mean, some, no, of, he, those, some he, of those were he placed good ki kicks. Um, I'd say that, I mean, for sure you did better than I did. I've never really played goalie all that much. But, uh, I mean, some of those you were supposed to get, and some of those you, you definitely were not supposed to get. And I think you got most of the ones you weren't supposed to get, which is, like, any successful thing. Sometimes yeah. when, you, when you place them in that, that back left corner, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, his placement was was I mean, terrific. What were you supposed shots. to do? You know, like you can't get over to those. Yeah, you can't get over those. Um, Even the one he faked and it hit the post. I mean, that was good. That was really, really good on his on his behalf. That was yeah. a good shot because he faked me out. Yeah, I'll give him credit where credit is due. Right. He just he couldn't he couldn't. But you credit. were really flying through the air though. He wasn't joking. I'm he I got that. hops. Like people don't know because I'm terrible at basketball, and that's all the the highlight tapes that people have seen of me. I, I'm actually kind of athletic. Yeah, I'm sneakily athletic. You should have been a, a goalie. Been I wanted to play D one. I wanted to. My placement, my uh, positioning was never there. You should have walked on for uh, Iona. I was thinking of. I genuinely considered it. Genuinely. Oh God. I genuinely. But you know what I said? I said I feel like I'm going to be facing an ESPN analyst. I don't want to call him an analyst. An ESPN personality in a couple of years anyway. So I'll get my flowers then. I almost felt like using those as a highlight tape to walk on to Iona. Yeah. For you your know? Senior year and just be like, hey. Hey, listen, Look I beat a, I beat a 40 year old guy that works I beat, at ESPN. I beat Rothenberg. Man. I beat Rothenberg. And they're like, yeah. say less. You get the starting spot. I bet your goalie never beat Rothenberg. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, no, shout out to Rothenberg. I appreciate him uh, having me on for a, for a, a penalty kick shootout, giving me a little yeah. bit of clout from his show. You yeah, know, we're always, a, that was awesome. It's yeah. always appreciated. Hopefully he'll come on. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a great time. It was a fun time overall. Uh, and as soon as – that's the thing. It's like you, you learn – 
it's it's a funny thing what being on camera teaches you is that you, you just when you're in front of the cameras and you're just the, the cameras are on you learn how to perform oh absolutely you know that's the same thing like if we if we broadcast to a million people live we'd still be having the same conversations because it's just we know how to it's it's it becomes uh, second nature after a while. Absolutely. Muscle memory. And, you know, I think we learned a lot this podcast, too. You know, we learned about uh, we learned about Bill Cosby's case a little bit. We learned uh, that witchcraft is real. And we learned that Coop could give your favorite ESPN personality work. Isn't that uh, kind of crazy? In, in penalty kicks, That's kind of crazy. I think we learned a lot, bro. We learned a lot this episode. What? Episode 10 was the educational episode. It, well, I mean, it's I, we still got a little bit to talk oh, about. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. We're going we're gonna to keep learning. We're still going, but yes. But it's up just until so this far, point, dude. So far, we're about what? About 44 minutes in. We've learned a lot. We've for learned sure. a lot for 44 minutes. Uh, I don't know. Mad respect for that. That's yeah. an awesome video. That was like a professional video. Yeah. If I if I if I didn't know who Rothenberg was, which I kind of did, if I didn't know who you were, yeah, which I already kind of do, uh, and I saw that in like my Twitter feed, I would have stayed and watched that. that you was think awesome. so? Yeah. yeah. I mean, 100%. listen. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, some people go to the show and they support. I, I love little videos like that too, man. Just what smaller content instead of the the Just longer the, form the, stuff. Those, those like challenge videos. I mean, we were talking about doing them for STF too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Doing challenge videos. Yeah. I want to start maybe doing skits because I, I our skits were our most successful stuff. Yeah, I like this. I, I liked our skits, especially if we had. I, I'd rather do skits like in some like place like this though, where it like looks professional. Yeah, we can. Like we they can were just... cool, but they were like in dorm rooms, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but the content was good. We should do a one v one. What in uh, basketball? Basketball. Yeah. I the last time what, what happened the last time we played? We got one game each, right? Or maybe you got two to my, to my one. Oh, the okay, your little hoop outside yeah. The thing. Yeah, I think I think we did go one for one. One, one for yeah. one. Yeah, that'd be an interesting video. Yeah, I haven't been practicing, but I'd Neither have to. I'd have to I'm practice so, a little I'm, bit. I'd bad. be so rusty. A little bit more. Excuse me, or, or else I'd be bad. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, we could figure something like that out. I haven't played basketball in months. Yeah. No, me neither. Yeah. I've just been too busy, bro. Yeah, it's just. I mean, like I've been. I, I work out, so it's just like, it's either work out or play basketball, and I always choose working out. Really? Yeah. That's funny. A lot of people would probably go the other way around. I well, know, I mean, not if they're a true lughead. I love basketball. I always have loved I fell in love with basketball when I was like 14, 15 years old, you know. But to play basketball, I feel like that part of my life is over. So I just don't really have the motivation. Explain that. Well, I played in high school. You know, I played varsity basketball and then I got to college and that was kind of over. You know, we still played for fun, but it's just like. The reason I played so much in in high school was a I loved it and b I was working towards something. I still love the game, but it's like now the motivation now like I'm not really working towards anything. Oh well, you got other stuff you on your know? plate too. I mean, yeah. we're working towards podcasts. Exactly. I got I got my schooling. I got podcasting. I got yeah. There's other stuff now. This, that, and the other. That's thing. that's what happened with with goalkeeping for me. Yeah. Uh, so I understand what you mean. Yeah, but you you're know? better at goalkeeping than I was at basketball. Well, it's always that. I just I, my my cat like reflexes and my athleticism always saved me, but my positioning was not good enough to be D one. The, the cat like reflexes are really you know it does it. That's the same thing when I was when I would uh, you know do sparring. My defense yeah. was always good because I could always my head movement right was second to none. Right, that's uh, awesome, dude. Yeah. So shout out to Dave Rothenberg. I want to talk real quick though about Netflix adding video games. Yeah. To the I, catalog. I definitely had an opinion about that for with sure. With a with a with a uh, oh, I think what what is it. It's a higher up from e uh, from uh, Electronic Arts, so you already know it's going to be microtransactions out the wazoo. Yeah, it's going to be all EA games. Um, and no, and knowing Netflix too, it's going to be like the most obscure video games. You know what I'm saying? No, if they have EA, EA on their side, they're going to have like the good ones: Battlefield, Assassin's Creed. No, but I, I probably you're probably right. But just imagine yeah, if they had. The, if imagine if they only had movie video games. Imagine they only had Netflix video games like netflix original video games yeah netflix original jumanji jumanji the game oh my god um Ugh. first you know that'd of all be buns. first of all if you don't know anything about video games ea electronic arts is an awful company money hungry Horrible. they make they make good video games but they always find a way to ruin said know? video games yeah are you kidding me yeah is it do. the same thing every year just so, with more microtransactions dude you listen i guess let me, relative, let me, they let do me make finish let me let me finish they they ruin their games by placing in these things in video games where you pay real money to get a, an advantage, which actually at one point it got so bad that the U.S. had to go and change some laws in the in. in that's how money hungry. That's EA how is. bad EA got. Yes. However, that being said, the reason they're able to get away with this is because they do make the, you know, 
the highest of quality video game. They make the Fast and Furious of the video game. You know how in movies you have the big AAA movies? That's what EA makes. They make the Battlefield series, 2K. Yeah. Um, do they no, they don't, they don't make 2K. They don't make 2K. 2K is 2K Sports. Yeah, okay. 2K, 2K do they, make, they don't make. They make Madden. Nope. They don't make oh, Madden. No, EA, no, EA makes Madden. Sorry, I was still thinking about 2K. They, they make Madden, UFC, yeah. FIFA. They made NBA Live, but that was a hot pack of ass, yeah. so they, they stopped doing that. Then they what? made Star Wars Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront, Battlefield. Battlefield is the big one. They're uh they had Fight Night for a while, which was a boxing. They they went into tennis, rugby. I mean, they went into all the sports. They make they make Need the, for Speed the big ones though. Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Do they make that? They don't make Assassin's Creed. I might be bugging. Is that THQ? Right there. I, I, there's so many. Ubisoft makes Assassin's Ubisoft, Creed. Ubisoft, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'm bugging. Um, I, I swear to God, I do my I do know my video games. Uh, but basically, they're like the big boys in the video game center. Um, now. Netflix wants to add streaming games to their service, which would be huge in my opinion. It's not, it's not a bad idea. Because I'm like the I'm like an old school video game guy. Like I still buy my the discs. I still buy I like discs. discs. I like the discs. I, I got, like the feeling of opening it up and getting yes. the, the Saran wrap off it and yes. putting it into the PlayStation. Yeah, I don't know if that's just me. A lot of people that I know that I talk to, a lot of my friends, they'll stream stuff. But I personally, I like putting. I it like in the and, classic way, and yeah. also it's just like I don't have enough room. On my system yeah, to dude. have as like a serious gamer like me, it's like I can't download all the games that I want to have. I'd rather just have them on disc. When I got my PS5, I got the disc version. Yeah, I paid the extra hundred dollars or whatever it was. That's that was so scummy how they made they charge an extra one hundred just to get a disc version. Dude, it's just you think like, it'd be the other way around? Yeah, because but I ha- but I had to because all my PS4 games were on right, discs yeah. already. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, and it's, they're backwards compatible. Edit that out. Yeah, they're backwards compatible. <laughs> all right. They're uh they're backwards compatible, right? So uh, but not everyone's like that. Like I, a lot of my friends do stream a lot of games. They have like yeah. the EA Pass, whatever it is, the Xbox Games Pass, and what they offer is just like you pay us a certain amount per month, and we let you play let all you the play video games game you want yeah. on our platform. See, I've never been a big enough video game guy for that. I understand you're more of definitely more of the well versed video game fan. I'll stick to the two Ks, the UFCs. Uh, this is literally my rotation of games: Warzone, UFC, FIFA. 2K, and then if I'm feeling like Madden, I'll play Madden, but I like to do the franchise mode. Where well, you, you, get to, you like sports games. I like sports games. I do. I and like sports games. I know Warzone isn't really a sports game, but it's one of those highly competitive games. Yeah. That, like, no, it has that, the same edge as sports. That stresses me out, though. I can't really play, I can't really play Warzone like that. Yeah. I've talked about it on past podcasts. I can't, I can't do Warzone. I'm like, not a big Warzone guy. You, you, nothing stresses me out more than when you look up at a mountain and you see the glint of a sniper. That takes years off my life. I yeah. can't do it. But I, I like playing 2K. You know, I got my My Career Mode, 98 yeah. overall, Atlanta Hawks starting point guard. Right. Sent Trey Young to the bench. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy into video games. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, dissing anyone that is. I'm just saying I'm personally, it's not my, my forte. But I will say Netflix adding video games. I think Netflix kind of got cucked by HBO Max, Disney Plus, I Paramount agree. Plus, all I those agree. guys. Obviously, if you're a businessman or if you're an internal ops guy, this is a good move. Right. Because this is adding something. HBO Max doesn't have video games. Right. Paramount Plus doesn't have video games on their service. Hulu doesn't have video games on their service. Nobody does. And, and, and Netflix it, adding them is a big – it's it's like a LeBron comeback block. Right. Absolutely. And it's also just like it shows how resilient uh, Netflix is. I mean they, they were the first one to do to, – to, to mainstream the whole streaming thing. Yeah. And then all these companies were like, wait a minute. We can do this now. We can do it. So they yeah. took all their movies off from Netflix. And now Netflix is continuing to evolve uh, by adding video games. It's just like, and how long is it till these companies start copying and doing the same, same thing? Netflix, the, whoever is in charge of the ideas for Netflix changed the world. They did. But I will say, I don't know if you know this, Netflix has racked up a stupendous amount of debt. Oh, I bet they're nine Just billion in debt because they're pulling because everyone's pulling the movies off of them. Yeah, or sharing passwords. And the thing is, they also keep paying for these shitty Netflix originals. Yeah, Stranger Things was good. There's right. outliers, but I don't know if you ever look on Netflix anymore. I personally don't even watch Netflix that much. I'm not a big Netflix original. Guy. Yeah, no, I'm not a big Netflix guy in general. Yeah, but when you look on it, it it's like, why would I want to watch Netflix original? Dude, like Fargo three or something like that, something crazy, you know. It just I, something's got to change with the with the money spending over there. Maybe the internal ops, but again, I, I don't hate this. What I'm trying to say is, I think this is a good step. This is a step in the right direction for Netflix. I if agree. you're gonna add video games, 
I don't know how many people realistically would try video games in the service just because of what we talked about because there's already streaming on PlayStation and on consoles. Yeah. So I don't know how many people would be willing to do that. It almost gives me re- – you remember Redbox? Yeah, I do remember Redbox. You could you could rent a video game. I rented Black Ops 2 off of a Redbox outside of a Walmart. Really? That's the vibe that it gives me. But I don't know how many people would be willing to bite at that. I think you have to look at who they're trying to appeal to. I don't think they're trying to appeal to serious gamers. I don't think they're going to – trying to appeal to people who have PlayStations and Xboxes and all that. I think – that they're going to try to appeal to people who have Netflix already and just don't usually play video games but want to give it a try because it's already going to be there anyway.